Hello friends, it's Lisa and today I'm going to be sharing with you all all of the books that I own that are on my TBR, my entire physical TBR. You can't see it in the background, but I will take you over there in a moment. I have a kind of shelf on my headboard by my bed that has all of the books that I own that I have yet to read, and it's just really nice to have that all in one place so I can see what books I have yet to read. Yeah, I have, I think, I just counted and I already forget. I think it was 43 books that I have on my physical TBR, which I'm very happy about. I try to keep my physical TBR under 50 just because I know myself. I like having options, but I don't like having too many options because then I get overwhelmed and then I don't read anything. And I'm already struggling to actually read the books on my physical TBR. So I like to keep mine pretty reasonable under 50. For some people that might be a lot. Some people that might be like a third or a fourth of what their physical TBR is, but that is just kind of the number that I think works best for me. But let me take you on over to the TBR shelf and we can start going through the books that I have yet to read that I own. All right, welcome to the TBR shelf. You can see some of it here. I have all of the books that I have yet to read on this shelf right here and we're just gonna go through them all and chat through them. I'm not gonna probably spend too much time talking about the descriptions of these books. I mainly just want to show which ones I have. There's also some books on here that I'm like maybe contemplating unhauling so I'd love your thoughts if I should read them or not. Just give me all your thoughts down below. But let's just get into it shall we? So I do have them organized in alphabetical order because that's the way my brain works. <laughs> I'm also kind of standing in front of them a little bit, so sorry about that. But the first two that I have here are both from Jane Austen. I have Persuasion and Sense and Sensibility. These are the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions. They have the pretty sprayed edges. They also both have really pretty like end paper type things. These are like cloth bound editions. I almost just dropped that one, <laughs> but they're just really, really pretty. And I have the Pride and Prejudice one. I think they have Emma in this edition, but I think some of her other books are not in this one. So I'm going to have to figure out which ones I want to get for her other books, but I definitely want to read all of Jane Austen's works. I've really enjoyed the two that I've read, especially Pride and Prejudice. That's like one of my favorite books of all time. So really excited to eventually get to these. I will say I am partial to the pink just because I love pink, but I'm also like green is having a moment right now and I'm into it. So definitely excited to pick both of these up and they're also just very stunning. <laughs> all right, next we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This is a book that I've seen basically everywhere. You can't really escape it if you go on any sort of social media, any like bookish corner of social media. It's on Bookstagram, it's on Twitter, it's on YouTube, it's on BookTok, it's everywhere, but I'm really excited to read it. This just seems like it's going to be right up my alley. It's like cozy fantasy and it's on my five star predictions for this year. So hopefully I enjoy it. I just, I don't see me not enjoying it. This just seems like something I'm absolutely going to love. So very excited to hopefully get to this soon. This is definitely like a priority out of all of the books on my TBR. This is also one of the newest additions to my own TBR. So maybe that's why I'm the most excited about it. <laughs> so that was one of my newest additions to my TBR and I now have the oldest book that I've had on my TBR. Obviously not like publication wise, the book that I've owned the longest. <laughs> this is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Leigh Bardugo. This is a part of the DC Icons series. I'm not planning on reading the whole series. I mainly just wanted this because it was Wonder Woman and Leigh Bardugo. <laughs> I got this as a birthday gift back in 2019. I got this pretty much at the start of my YouTube channel and I still have yet to read it. <laughs> Me and Therese even discussed buddy reading it. She read it and I didn't. I completely flopped on that buddy read, but that I feel like was my, my chance to read it. And now it's just still sitting on my TBR on the shelf and I don't know if I really have an interest in reading it anymore. I still like Lee Bardugo's writing. I still like Wonder Woman, but I just don't know if I really have an interest in this anymore. I think I might end up picking up the audiobook for this and maybe reading it that way, but it's definitely one that I'm potentially going to unhaul. But if you've read this, I'd love to know your thoughts, if it's worth reading, picking up at all, whether it's the actual book or the audiobook or whatever it may be. Definitely let me know if you've read this and your thoughts because I've been putting off reading it for almost four years now. So so let me know if I should actually end up reading it. <laughs> All right, next we have Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Barron. This is a like Cinderella retelling YA fantasy, but it seems like it's a very interesting take on the Cinderella story. I believe at like the annual ball in this kingdom, the girls kind of are selected by the men within this kingdom to be their wives. And then the girls that are not chosen just disappear and you never hear or see from them again. And the main character would much rather marry or be with her like best friend. So the night of the ball, she runs away. And I think she like finds, yeah, she finds herself hiding in Cinderella's mausoleum. There she meets Constance, the last known descendant of Cinderella and her stepsisters. So like Cinderella is a real person 
but like a real person in history. So I think that's just a very interesting way of doing a Cinderella story. Plus, I believe this is sapphic, so I just need to get to it. I've gone to like pick it up and start reading it a couple of times, and for some reason, I just didn't actually end up picking it up. But I've had this on my TBR for like maybe like a year or so now, so definitely need to get to it soon. I've heard really good things. Plus, I love a good like retelling, and this seems like I've said a very interesting way of telling the Cinderella story. Next, I have Starfish by Akemi Don Bowman. I really don't know much about this book because I put this on my wish list like few years ago, I think Sid got me this for my birthday back in like 2020 and I've yet to read it. But I know that this is like a very hard hitting YA contemporary. So I just know I need to be in the right like mindset going into this book. I've heard really good things about this. I feel like everyone that I've seen read and talk about this book absolutely loves it. So I know I need to pick it up soon. I've had it on my TBR, like I said, for a few years now. So it's just been staring at me and I just have been putting it off because I know it's gonna hurt me, but I know it's gonna be really good as well. I've heard such good things about this author. So definitely going to be hopefully picking this up soon when I get in the mood for a hard-hitting like YA contemporary. Another book that I have is Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake, another hard-hitting YA contemporary. This one you're following Mara whose best friend ends up accusing Mara's twin of rape and I think it's just Mara trying to navigate the situation as it's someone within her family but also her best friend and making sure that she's sticking to what she believes in and it just seems like it's going to be very emotional. I have read, I think, one other Ashley Herring Blake at this point. I know she's written YA, middle grade, and now she's writing like adult contemporary romances, which I really want to read, but I read one of her YA books and I really enjoyed it. So I feel like I'm going to enjoy this one as well. I just, again, need to make sure I'm in the right headspace for it. All right, next, let's just bring them all out, shall we? <laughs> we have the last three books or the last three current books in the Graceling series. So I've read Graceling, I've read Fire, I just have Bitter Blue, Winter Keep, and Sea Sparrow on my TBR. But yeah, these are the third, fourth, and fifth books in the Graceling series. I have no idea how long the series is going to be. I don't know if Kristen Kishore has said how many books she plans to write, but I'm really excited to keep going. I have really enjoyed Graceling and Fire, especially because like the first two books in the series, they're set in the same world. Like all of these books are set in the same world, but I think there's different like main characters throughout them. So like in the first one, you're following Katza, who is a Graceling, which is like someone who has this certain like magical ability. So Katza is able to kill a man with like her bare hands like a girl boss. <laughs> and then in Fire, it's like set 50 years before Graceling, but there's still like, there are definitely ties to Graceling in Fire. And it's really interesting to see things like kind of start within that book, but it's also very separate in its own story kind of. So I'm really interested to see what happens in the rest of the series. And also just these covers are, they're just so gorgeous. I'm obsessed with them. I think they're so beautiful. So really excited to keep going. I know I have Quite a few to get through and they're not very tiny books but I have really enjoyed the first two so I think I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the series I hope because I own them <laughs> I normally don't do that I normally don't buy a whole series or like other books beyond like the next book in a series if I'm in the middle of a series I'm saying series too many times normally I just don't have a whole series waiting for me to be read basically is what I'm saying I normally just buy as I read through them but I don't know I just had a good feeling about this series and so far so good so hopefully I enjoy these ones <laughs> okay next I have the city of brass by S.A. Chakraborty I recently got this one as well and I still haven't really read the synopsis of this one in like recent times like since I got the book I have heard people talk about this series and what it's about many times before but it's been a while and I kind of just want to go into it without really knowing much of anything. All I really need to know is that it's been compared to Ember in the Ashes and Saba Tahir herself has blurbed this book. That's okay. Whatever you say Saba Tahir, I'm in. I'm excited. I feel like I'm really going to enjoy it plus it's so floppy <laughs> but it is yet another series so I'm hoping to finish some series before I start this one and I have a feeling like I'm gonna read this one and just gonna want to jump into the next books in the series so I want to make sure I'm like mentally prepared to marathon a series but I need to finish some series first I'm still saying series so many times <laughs> but yeah really excited to get into this one I've heard such good things and like I said if Sabatier says it's good she can't lie to me. She would never lie to me. <laughs> Next book we have is one that I'm kind of contemplating on hauling as well. This is Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho. This is a companion to Wicked Fox, which is the first book in this kind of uh, series. I never know whether to call it a sequel or a companion because I think it's following different characters than in the first book. It's following some of like the side characters from Wicked Fox, but it says right on there that it's a companion. So 
that answers my question. <laughs> but I read Wicked Fox back in, I think, August of 2020. I was so excited because at that time, like, this book was being released, like, right after I read Wicked Fox. I was like, oh, great, I'm not gonna have to wait for the sequel. And I think I went out and bought it right away, and I have yet to read it. And now at this point, I feel like I've kind of lost interest in this series and reading this book. I feel like I should give it a try just because I did buy this book. But, like, at this point, I don't even remember what Wicked Fox is about. I know you're following um, a character, Mi Young, I think. Yes, wow, I am impressed that I remembered that. But she is a nine-tailed fox, so she is like able to like ink suck the souls out of men or something. I don't really remember. I don't even remember how the main characters in that story, like why they come together, what the plot I don't remember anything. So I feel like going into this book, I'd be like, I'm a little lost and wouldn't really remember a whole lot. So I don't know. I liked Wicked Fox, but the more time goes on, I'm just like, it was like it was a fun read in the moment, but it's not something that I like think about a lot. So I just I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna end up picking this up, but I own it. So it's technically on my TBR. Let me know if you've read this. I also like, I feel like I haven't heard the best things about it, but I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have read this. Next, we have Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi, and we just need to talk about how stunning this book is. I am obsessed that with the dust jacket being like transparent in some places. Like, I just think that's so smart more books should do this. <laughs> but after reading and loving Yoke by Mary H.K. Choi, I really want to pick up all of her books. I'm really excited to eventually pick this up. I know Mary H.K. Choi's books are not for everyone, but I'm really excited to give them a try. And I think they are like typically more like hard-hitting, emotional YA contemporaries with like flawed characters. And I really honestly don't even know what this book is about. I used to, but it's been so long that it's been sitting on my TBR that I've kind of forgotten. <laughs> yeah, the description honestly doesn't give me a whole lot to work with plot Wise, I do think Mary H.K. Choi's books are definitely more character driven. So I'm excited to just go into it, see what happens, and I would like to pick it up soon. I feel like I need to do like a series on my channel reading the books on my physical TBR because this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> okay, next we have the Legend Born series. So I have both Legend Born and Blood Marked, and technically, I have read Legendborn, so it's technically not a TBR book. However, I think I read this back in 2021. It was like April of 2021 or something. I don't really remember a whole lot of this book. I remember certain things. I remember how it ends, but there was a lot of things regarding like the world and like the magic system that I just do not remember. So I definitely want to do a reread of this before going into Bloodmarked, which just recently came out. So I just kept these books together and put them both on my TBR shelf because I definitely need to do a reread of this before Bloodmarked. But this is a like King Arthur retelling type of series. We're following Brie who has recently lost her mother and so to kind of get away from that she goes to this college or she like goes to this program at this college and she discovers this like secret society and the students within this society are called Legendborn as you may have been able to predict and I think they like hunt creatures and things like that and I think there's a bit of like a competition element within this book. If I'm remembering correctly I honestly like I do not remember anything from this book. So excited to reread it and revisit it because I remember enjoying it and then get into the sequel. All right, next we have another series. We have the Angel Fall series by Susan E. So I have Angel Fall, World After, and End of Days. And what's funny about this series is I had Angel Fall marked on like my want to read shelf on Goodreads like back when I made my Goodreads account. So 2016. And a few years ago or like a couple years ago, I was going through my Goodreads and like getting rid of things that I had on that shelf that I just genuinely wasn't interested in anymore. And this was a series that I had kind of contemplated getting rid of off of that shelf. And then I went to go and look at the description and it sounded interesting. And I also saw a lot of really good reviews and like people were reading it in like more recent years and still giving it good reviews. So I was like, oh, like maybe I'll keep it on my Goodreads shelf. And then one of my friends was getting rid of a bunch of their books. And before like donating them, they were like, do you want any of them? I'll send them to you. And this whole series was on their shelf. And I was like, that seems like a sign. It was like right after I went through my Goodreads. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take those. And and this was again a couple years ago and I've yet to read them but they're very short I know I'll be able to like fly through them I think I'm just waiting for a moment where I feel like marathoning this series I keep thinking I'm gonna do a 24-hour readathon where I read these books and then I do a 24-hour readathon and then I never do it so maybe someday I will but I definitely think that this is gonna be a really fun series to read and marathon and it just feels like a, a classic YA kind of series so I'm excited to read them I've heard good things and I've heard good things like recently so yeah excited to have these on my shelf I don't know again when I'm gonna get to them but hopefully soon okay next we have Blood Scion by Deborah Fallier and I'm really excited to pick this one up too this is a YA fantasy that I believe gets compared to 
Ember in the Ashes as well. <laughs> I basically, if there's something compared to Ember in the Ashes, I'm gonna want to read it. But also this has some things in it that I feel like I really enjoy. I think the main character has to like hide her certain like abilities or certain powers and she like sneaks into the military, I think, in this world and has to pretend to be a part of that. And I love it when people or like when characters have to pretend to be something that they're not. They have to like infiltrate something. I just always really enjoy reading that in books. I don't know why. So very excited to pick this up as well. I feel like I've said I'm excited to read all of these books for the most part, which I know is probably annoying to hear me say over and over again, but it's genuinely true. I feel like since making this shelf with all of my TBR books, I have gotten like even more excited to pick these books up. So many of them I kind of forgot I even owned. They were kind of just shoved in on various spots on my bookshelf. So I kind of forgot about them. And now seeing them constantly and being reminded of the books that I own that I have yet to read, it actually has made me really excited to pick a lot of these books up. This is definitely a newer addition to my own TBR, but a lot of the books that I've had for years, I'm getting like re-excited. That's not a word. I'm just feeling excited to pick them up again. It's making me feel like I want to get to all of these books sooner. And that's exciting because I've been putting a lot of these off for years. So excited about this one, like I am with a lot of these books. <laughs> Next, we have Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. This is the sequel to These Violent Delights, which this is like a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the 19. 20s in Shanghai and Roma and Juliet are a part of like rivaling gangs and I think like people start dying on both sides so they kind of have to come together to figure out what is going on and I really enjoyed these violent delights. I had a good time while I was reading it so I really want to get to the sequel. Just haven't yet. <laughs> and honestly I don't know for sure because I feel like Chloe Gong is just releasing new books all the time and it's probably just me not paying that much attention. It's most likely that um, but it feels like there's a lot of books that are being published by Chloe Gong that are kind of set in the same world. There's like novellas and then the like Foul Lady Fortune that book I think is following Wing Rosalind, is that what her name is from this series? I think it like she's the main character within that book in that series. So if I enjoy this book, I want to continue on and read some of the other books that Chloe Gong is writing in this world. So I need to do that. But first I need to read this book. But I'm kind of scared because like Romeo and Juliet retelling. Final book in a Romeo and Juliet retelling series what's gonna happen to these main characters? I don't know. Nervous about it. So that's why I keep putting it off, but eventually I will read it. <laughs> All right, next we have a couple of romances. I definitely don't have as many like romance books on my TBR as I would like, but I do have these ones and I'm very excited about both of them. So one of them is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall. This is a historical romance with a trans main character and I'm just so excited to read this. I've heard really good things about it. In this book she's like reconnecting with her family and her best friend but they don't realize that Viola is the friend that they lost before because now she has transitioned and she's now living as her like true self and they don't realize that she is who she is. So it just seems like it's gonna be a bit angsty, a bit emotional, but I also think it just sounds really great and I really want to read more historical romance and I've heard really good things about this one. So very excited about this. I keep saying I'm excited. I'm going to try to be better about that throughout the rest of this video. <laughs> okay, I moved to the other side of my bed so I can actually reach the books, but the other romance that I have is Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is the third and final book in the Brown Sisters like companion series. I really enjoyed the first two and so that makes me feel like I'm going to enjoy this one as well. It's on my five star predictions for this year so I hope I'm right. <laughs> but I think this is like a grumpy sunshine, enemies to lovers, set at a bed and breakfast kind of vibe and that just sounds incredible. And Eve Brown, like the way she's been described kind of as a certified hot mess and just kind of seems like she's really struggling to like figure out her direction in life that's relatable content so <laughs> I feel like I'm just gonna really relate to her and I feel like I'm just gonna really love this obviously as I've made it a five-star prediction for this year next we have the fifth season by MK Jemison this is a book that I've heard such good things I've heard such good things about this series but it's just been a bit like intimidating I've heard that there's just like I think there might be a lot of characters and there's just like it's more like sci-fi I think I think it has something to do with like the elements influencing the world and like it's, it's it starts with the great red rift across the heart of the world's sole continent, spewing ash that blots out the sun. It starts with death, with a murdered son and a missing daughter. It starts with betrayal and long dormant wounds rising up to fester. This is the stillness, a land familiar with catastrophe where the power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and where there is no mercy. 
it just sounds stressful. <laughs> and I've heard like the best way to go about this series is to kind of read the rest of them like back to back or not like back to back but just read them kind of close together. I've heard there's a lot of information that it's very easy to forget if you spend too much time waiting in between picking up the next books in the series so I just find that a bit intimidating but I've heard such good things about this series so I'm very excited to pick this up I think next month. I think me and Darian are planning on reading this together uh, in March so I'll let you know how it goes yet again starting another series but it's fine. <laughs> then we have the next two books in the Poppy War series or the last two books so we have The Dragon Republic and The Burning God another series I find very intimidating. <laughs> I read The Poppy War back in 20... 21 and I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars but I've just been kind of scared to continue on with the series because there are definitely some like brutal and hard to read moments in that book. It's also like there's a lot of really interesting political aspects as well, a lot of characters and I really did enjoy it as much as you can enjoy a story like that. I just thought it was really well done. So I want to continue on with the series obviously as I own the next few books in that trilogy but I just find it very intimidating. I'm just so scared as to what's gonna happen. I also saw a spoiler for something that happened in The Burning God when it released because people on Twitter don't know how to tag spoilers <laughs> and it's just stuck with me and it makes me not want to read it. So I don't know when I'm going to continue on with the series, when I'm going to finish it because I'm very scared but I did really like The Poppy War so I'm hoping to eventually finish this series like in the near future. <laughs> and then also by RF Kuang we have Babel which is a release that came out in 2022, came out last year and I have seen nothing but good things about this book. Everyone is loving this book. It was on so many favorite books of 2022 lists. So I have a feeling that I'm going to enjoy it. I feel like describing this book is so complicated for someone who hasn't read it yet. I know people who have read this book and have a hard time explaining it, but the main character goes to Babel, which is Oxford University's Royal Institute of Translation. And I believe the magic has to do with these like silver bars that are like the actual like manifestation of lost in translation. And I believe the main character Robin starts to struggle with like being a part of Babel because it's like actively going against his homeland and there's a lot of discussion on colonization and it just seems like it's gonna be very impactful and I've seen a lot of like emotional reactions to this book so I'm excited to read it but again another book that I find very intimidating not only because of the content but because of the amount of hype and amount of love that this book has like I want to love it as much as well so we'll see. Another five star prediction. Was this on my five star? Yeah. This is another five star prediction for the year. So I'm gonna read it at some point this year and hopefully love it. Next we have another hard hitting YA contemporary. This is We Are Okay by Nina LaCour. This is another like hard hitting YA contemporary um, where the main character I think is like she ran from her old life and from her past and the complications there and I think someone from her past ends up coming to kind of talk to her about everything that happened. So she's kind of forced to confront the things that she has run away from. So sounds like it's gonna be emotional. I see it's an honor honest portrayal of grief. I see that on the back so that just sounds like it's gonna hurt my feelings. Can't wait. <laughs> Next we have Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. We're not gonna talk about what this book is about. It's Sarah J Mass. We all know. But this is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I read Throne of Glass, didn't love it, but I have the sequel so I'm at least going to give this a try. I have heard that if you read the Assassin's Blade, which is like the short story collection, if you read that and then go into Throne of Glass it kind of can help with your enjoyment of the series. So I may read that as well. I don't know. We'll see if I end up continuing. I have heard from a lot of people if you get to the third book and you're not into it, it's time to just give up. So we'll see how far I make it into the series, but I have the second one so I will at least be reading this at some point. Next I have Ophelia After All by Raquel Marie. You're following Ophelia who I think has always been described and she knows that she's kind of like boy crazy. She's always having crushes on different guys, but then I think she ends up having a crush on a girl and that kind of just like starts to confuse her. So I think that this book is really about identity and finding things out about yourself. I think there's even issues with her like friend group that she has so it just seems like it's going to be more of like a coming of age and coming to terms with your identity and different parts of your identity and again another one I've heard amazing things about so I feel like this is going to be another winner. Next I have two Morgan Matson books. I have Since You've Been Gone and Save the Date. I believe Since You've Been Gone is about this girl whose friend like disappears but she leaves behind this list for her friend to complete and Save the Date is about a 
um, a main character, I think her sister is getting married and everything within the wedding is just going wrong. But I've heard really good things about Morgan Matson's YA contemporaries. I've never read one before, even though she has so many. I've heard about them for so many years. So definitely want to give them a try, but I've had these on my shelf for another couple of years. So we'll see if it ever happens, but I do want to at least try one of them. I've heard really good things about since you've been gone. So I definitely think I will pick this up at some point, maybe this summer. Next I have the Song of Achilles, a staple, a classic, if you will. Do I need to talk about what this is about? No, I don't think so. I think we all know. I'm like one of the last people ever to have read this book. It's very popular. I've heard so many things about this book for years and years and years, and I've just been very intimidated and scared to pick it up. Not only because people sob over this book, but because it's so hyped. But I've heard really good things about it, and I definitely want to give it a try. I've never read anything from Madeline Miller before, so I'm excited to try out one of her books finally after years of seeing people talk about them. Next, we have The Chandler Legacies by Abney Nazemian. This was a gift from Darian when we met over the summer last year, and so I just have very, like, fond mems looking at this book, even though I really, I still don't really know what it's about. I think it's, like, a group of friends who are part of this like writing group and the assignment that they're given, they have to like expose a lot of their secrets and things that they've never told anybody, I think. Another one that seems like it's going to be a very like character driven novel that really focuses on friendships and these secrets that they all have. So it sounds really interesting. I know Darian really loved this book, but I don't feel like I've heard very much about it other than from her. So I'm excited to see for myself what I think. Then I have The Midnight Lie by Marie Rutkowski. I have had this book on my TBR for quite a few years now. I know I got it in 2020. Target was doing a sale. It was like a buy to get one free thing with books and music and things like that. So I kind of picked this up on a whim because I was buying BTS albums and I was like, well, I can get one thing for free. So here we go. But I think that this is like a spinoff series from Marie Rutkowski's other series. What is it called? The Winner's Trilogy. And so I have not read that and I don't know if I'm going to be confused reading this. I don't know if when I picked this up if I knew that it was like a companion series. And honestly I don't even really remember what this book is about. I know it's sapphic which is like the only reason I've kind of kept it on my shelf. So I don't know if you've read this let me know what you thought if I could read this without reading the other series if I'd be confused. But also I feel like I've just kind of lost interest in reading this but if you've read it I would love to know your thoughts because really I don't know what to do with it at this point. Then we have Vengeful by V. Schwab. This is the kind of sequel to Vicious which I read a couple years ago and absolutely loved. The first one you're following Victor and Eli who start experimenting on themselves to see if they can give themselves like extraordinary abilities but I think this book is following a different character who has some extraordinary abilities but I honestly haven't read much of the description because I kind of just want to go into it and see what happens. I'm excited to be back in this world, back with these characters, and it's just such an interesting concept with these extraordinary abilities and how people get them. So I'm excited to see what this is all about. I feel like I haven't heard the best things about this one in comparison to Vicious, but still excited to read this. Next I have a couple of books by the same author. I have Beyond the Black Door and In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This one is following this girl who I think is able to like dream walk or something, or she's a soul walker, and that means that she can travel through other people's souls while they sleep. And I think there's always like a black door that shows up in people's dreams, and her mother has always told her not to go through that black door, but then I think one day she does. And that's where the book goes from there. I don't know much beyond that so that's kind of all I want to know and this one I think has a lot of like political intrigue the main character has magic that she has to hide but then it accidentally gets exposed one day so she then ends up going to the kind of palace and she's like assigned to this undead soldier that has to like watch over her and I believe both of these books have ace rep within them I know for sure Beyond the Black Door does I'm pretty sure in the Ravenous Dark does as well but I just think that's so great I definitely need to read more books that feature ace characters so I'm really excited to pick these up for that reason as well and I've just heard good things about them so very excited for both of these as well whenever I end up getting to them who knows <laughs> all right the next books I have is box set of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor I do have the um, original not as pretty covers but these were also sent to me by my friend when they were getting rid of a bunch of books so I'm not gonna be complaining I'm not gonna be picky <laughs> but this is a series I still don't even really know what it's about somehow even though this is a series that has been talked about on booktube for years. I remember seeing these spines on people's bookshelves back when I was watching booktube like close to 10 years ago, <laughs> which is so wild to think about. And somehow I still don't really know. I think, does it have to do with like angels? Am I making that up? Oh, it says a sweeping and gorgeously written modern fantasy about a forbidden love, an ancient and epic battle, and hope for a world remade. All right, 
that's all I need to know. So we'll see how I end up feeling about these. I don't know when I'm going to end up reading all of them, but I do have the whole box set. So eventually I will read these and it will be nice to have like the whole series waiting for me if I like the first one. Then I have Ironheart by Nina Varela. This is the sequel to Crier's War, which I read a couple years ago and really, really loved it. So I'm definitely like wanting to pick up the sequel. I just haven't yet. I need to do a reread of Crier's War before getting into this book, which I don't mind because I liked that book so much. But can I remember what these books are about? I know that you're following these two characters, one who is trying to rebel against the Otome who kind of rule over this world and they are like these like made creatures. They're like kind of robots but like very like human esque and we're following Cryer who is like the princess and she's an Otome and then we have Ayla who is a human and is trying to rebel against the Otome but the two of them kind of cross paths and it makes things a little bit more complicated and I'm just really interested to see where this duology ends. I really liked Nina Varela's writing. I really like the characters so I'm very excited to eventually revisit Cryer's War and then finish off this duology. You would think finishing duologies with the amount of series that I'm in the middle of would be easy but it's not. <laughs> All right two more. I'm glad because I need to go and eat lunch so we're gonna wrap this up quickly. But we have A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is a thriller following this girl whose dad, when she was younger, I think she was 12, her dad confessed to kidnapping and killing these six young teenage girls. And now years later, the main character is starting to see similarities with other people that are going missing. And she is seeing similarities to her dad's case. So I think she starts to like investigate what is going on. And it sounds really interesting. And I've heard really good things about this book. And as someone who's not a big like thriller mystery, girly hearing so many people really love this book makes me like feel like this might be the one that I actually enjoy or one of the ones I enjoy so interested to pick this up I probably will pick it up probably in October I feel like I always save all the thrillers that I'm interested in for spooky season. <laughs> All right, and the final book on my TBR is Iron Widow by Zeran J. Zhao. I have heard really good things about this book. This is another one that like when it was released, I feel like it was everywhere. And I know Andrea and Therese really loved this book and I just really trust their recommendations, especially when it comes to fantasy. I feel like the three of us tend to have pretty similar like thoughts and opinions on fantasy books. And that's really all it took for me to add this to my wish list. And I think Andrea, yeah, Andrea was the one who gifted this to me. So I really don't know much about what this book is about, which tends to be a common theme. I used to. I feel like I know what the books are about when I hear people talk about them or when I like put them onto my like wish list or whatever. And then I end up forgetting by the time I actually like go to pick them up. But I'm excited to just like jump in and see what happens. And I feel like this is going to be one that I really enjoy. But that is it. Those are all of the books that I own that I have yet to read and are on my TBR. I would definitely love to know which ones you think I should be prioritizing and getting to like as soon as possible or which ones like some of the ones I was like contemplating unhauling that I wasn't super interested in. Which ones you can say that I could maybe perhaps skip and unhaul and make my physical TBR even smaller. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's going to be it for this video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.